If you're in your late 50s or early 60s, it's pretty important to understand how a transition to retirement pension can help you prepare for retirement. A transition to retirement pension allows you to access your super even while you're still working, giving you more options in relation to your work and optimising your tax position. G'day, I'm Chris Strano, the founder of SuperGuy, the place where Australians go to maximise their super and build their own retirement plan. If you're new here, make sure that you click the subscribe button and the notification bell so that you get notified each time I release a new video. And if you get value in this video, make sure you give it a thumbs up. It takes two seconds and it lets me know that you like the videos and it motivates me to make more. All right, let's get started. Okay, right now we're gonna talk about transition to retirement pensions. Probably my favorite superannuation topic, to be honest. The transition to retirement pension was born out of the 2007 simple super reforms, and this little gem is the perfect tool for people planning for retirement. Now, a transition to retirement pension goes by a few aliases that you may have heard of. Is it aliases or ali? I don't know. Anyway, the other ali that you may hear a, a transition to retirement income stream, a, a TRIS, a TRIP, a TTR pension, a non-commutable account-based pension, an NCAP, to name a few. These are all the same thing. So if you hear any of these terms, it's just a little pet name that a person is, has for it. I'll usually refer to it as a transition to retirement pension or a TTR pension. So what is a TTR pension? A TTR pension came about because traditionally people would work full-time until they decided to retire one day and then they would hang up the boots so that they could access their super, which was what used to be required to meet that rule to access your super. You had to be fully retired and you needed to have completely stopped work before accessing your super. And to be honest, this didn't help anyone. It didn't help retirees who would probably want to maybe continue working part-time or whatever because in order to access their super, they needed to be retired. And it didn't help the government because people retired sooner than they may have ordinarily, which meant that they would no longer be working and earning and paying taxes. In fact, they'd probably run out of super sooner as well and therefore become reliant on the age pension sooner. So this conundrum gave the government a light bulb moment. What if we could let people partially access their super and encourage them to transition into retirement by going from maybe full-time to part-time to casual work before eventually completely retiring. So having partial access to their super would then allow them to supplement reduced work-related income with superannuation pension income. And at that moment, the transition to retirement pension was born and has been a staple in pretty much every pre-retiree's retirement plan ever since. So how does a TTR pension work? Well, you can start a TTR pension with all or some of your superannuation account balance. However, to be eligible to start a TTR pension, you need to have reached your superannuation preservation age, which is shown in this table. If you haven't met your superannuation preservation age, then you cannot start a TTR pension. So if you've met your superannuation preservation age, you can start a TTR pension. The rules of the TTR pension are simple. You must draw an income, a pension income, equal to between 4% and 10% of your TTR pension balance each year. So that's each financial year. You cannot draw more and you cannot draw less. If you start the pension partway through a financial year, the minimum pension amount is proportionate, but the maximum remains at 10%. So let's do an example. Let's say that you start a TTR pension with $300,000 on the 1st of July. In this case, the minimum pension income amount would be 4%, which is $12,000. So you would need to receive at least $12,000 in TTR pension payments throughout that financial year. The maximum threshold would be 10%, which is $30,000. Therefore, you cannot draw an income in excess of $30,000 for the financial year based on this example. Uh, if instead you started the pension on, let's say the 1st of January, and let's pretend that that date is exactly halfway through the year, then your minimum pension requirement would be $6,000, which is half, but the maximum would remain at $30,000. Does that make sense? The minimum and maximum uh, pension amount is then recalculated on one July of each year based on your one July balance. 
So the 4% and the 10% will remain as percentage factors. But if your balance has dropped to say $280,000 by 1 July, your minimum will now be $11,200 and your maximum will be $28,000. So the beauty about the TTR pension income is that your pension payments can be used to supplement your work-related income if you've reduced to say part-time work uh, and then once you retire or once you reach age 65, whichever comes first, you would convert your TTR pension into an ordinary account-based pension. An ordinary account-based pension has no maximum income threshold and a 0% tax on investment earnings. Speaking of tax and my ability to create smooth segues into the next part of the video, let's talk about how a TTR pension is taxed. So there's two types of taxes to consider with a TTR pension. There's tax on investment earnings within the TTR pension account because your TTR pension balance remains invested just like an accumulation account or just like an ordinary account-based pension, your balance is invested. And just like these accounts, you can choose exactly how you want your balance to be invested. So there's, there's investment earning tax and then there's tax on your TTR pension payments. So let's begin with how the TTR pension account investment earnings are taxed. They're taxed in exactly the same way as an accumulation account, which is 15% on the investment income. So investment income such as share dividends, managed fund distributions, bank interest, term deposit interest, rental income, etc. Capital gains tax is also taxed at 15%. So if you sell an investment uh, within your TTR pension account for a profit, you pay 15% on the profit. However, if you owned that investment for longer than 12 months, you get a one third discount, which basically means that your capital gains tax is reduced to only 10%. So this is exactly the same as how earnings within an accumulation account is taxed. And this is also why you would convert your TTR pension to a standard account based pension as soon as possible. Like if you retire, or reach age 65, because then all earnings, income and capital gains are taxed at 0%. All right, so that's how earnings are taxed. But what about tax on TTR pension payments? Tax on TTR pension payments is identical to the tax on a standard account-based pension. And the tax on pension payments changes once you reach age 60. So basically, if you are age 60 or over and you receive pension payments from a TTR pension, these payments are usually received completely tax-free. And the reason I say usually is because there are rare instances where some income tax may be payable, uh, which is if your balance includes a taxable untaxed component, I'm not gonna get into that. But in 99.99% .99 of cases, pension payments will be received tax-free over age 60. If you're under age 60 receiving TTR pension income, then some tax may be payable. And this is how it works. Basically, Everyone's super or pension balance is made up of taxable components and tax-free components. And all withdrawals, including pension payments, must be made proportionately from each component. But the taxable component will be taxable under age 60. So let's use our previous example. If you started a TTR pension with $300,000 and you wanted to draw the minimum pension payment requirement of $12,000 in the first year, Let's say your balance consisted of 50% taxable component and 50% tax-free component. Then $6,000 of your $12,000 pension payment would be received tax-free because it consists of the tax-free component. And the remaining $6,000 would be taxed at your marginal tax rate, just like your wage or your salary or any other taxable income. However, you will receive a tax offset equal to 15% of the taxable component of the payment. I hope that's not too confusing. Even though the $6,000 of the $12,000 is taxable, you'll receive a tax offset of $900, which is 15% of the taxable component of the pension payment for the financial year. I really hope that makes sense. It does get a little technical at that point. This isn't something you necessarily need to remember because if you're receiving a TTR pension, your superannuation provider is required to provide you with a payment summary, just like your employer would. And then you simply pass that on to your accountant when you do your tax return. And we're gonna go through tax on pension income in detail in another video. So this covers just about all you need to know about TTR pensions and how they work. 
A couple of things to consider with TTR pensions before I let you go. Firstly, once you convert your super to an income stream, it becomes accessible for Centrelink purposes. Whereas if it remains in accumulation phase or an accumulation account, it is only accessible once you reach age pension age. So be mindful of that if you're on Centrelink benefits. Secondly, TTR pensions are not guaranteed to provide you with an income for the remainder of your life. Once the account balance reaches $0, you will not receive any further pension payments. Thirdly, if you've made contributions to your super fund that you wish to claim a tax deduction for uh, in the last financial year, this financial year, you need to notify your super fund of your intention to claim a deduction before transferring your accumulation account into a TTR pension. Otherwise, you'll be unable to claim a tax deduction. And finally, if you have any life insurances within your accumulation account that you want to keep, you should consider not transferring your total accumulation balance into a TTR pension because that's just going to cancel your policies. Instead, you want to consider leaving a small balance in your accumulation phase so that the account remains open and make sure that there's enough of a balance in there to continue covering insurance premiums for as long as you need. Or you can make ongoing contributions into the account so that the insurance premiums can continue to be paid. So to put it simply, you can start a TTR pension with your superannuation accumulation balance. You draw an income of between 4 and 10% of your account balance each financial year. Some tax may be payable on the pension payments if you're under age 60. No tax is payable on pension payments if you're over age 60. All earnings from investments within your pension account are taxed at up to 15%. And you can roll your TTR pension back to accumulation phase at any stage or convert it into a standard account-based pension if you've retired or reached age 65. Easy. I hope you now have the same passion for TTR pensions as I do. They're so beautiful, aren't they? See you next time. Stay super. Well, now we can all love TTR pensions together. If you've learned something new from this video, make sure you subscribe to my channel. And if you want more exclusive superannuation tips, head over to superguide.com.au and sign up to my newsletter for free. That's where I share my best content. Thanks for watching and I'll see you on the next one.